Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we're about 24 hours out from Hearthstone's next expansion being launched. And so with the launch of the expansion, of course, you have to do a ton of theory crafting. I have to do a ton. And today I'm going to be bringing you guys six of the best theory craft, most fun lists that I think are worth giving a shot once the expansion drops. Uh, it's going to be focused mostly on decks that look a little bit new, decks that haven't been seeing a ton of play in the meta. And so going to be focused on that, that I think can also be really competitive. Now, if you want to get like a very broad, very uh, more in depth, I guess, uh, theory craft stuff, I did a entire stream with Get Me Out that went on for a few hours and the VOD's still up there if you want to check out his channel, his channel and um, go through all that stuff. Um, also in my Discord server, I have deck lists for basically everything when it comes for the next expansion. So we have things like Odd Rogue, updated Quest Mage, even stuff like Big Warrior. And so there's a ton of stuff like that posted in the Discord. So if you want to check that out, feel free. Otherwise, let's jump in. All right, first up we have Dark Glare Warlock. Now Dark Glare Warlock is a deck that a lot of people tried, including the previously mentioned Get Me Out. Um, and Dark Glare is a card that had a ton of potential, I thought, when it got launched, but it didn't quite have enough support, I figured. Now I think we do have enough support. Dark Glare got a ton of really synergistic upgrades um, with the launch of this next expansion, including Raised Dead. Now Raised Dead is perfect with Dark Lair. It means the Dark Lair can be played on turn three and you can immediately start cycling through and playing more cards and generating mana and doing all that kind of stuff. There are also a number of other small upgrades that were very meaningful, including Tour Guide. Um, Tour Guide means you can play, uh, play it out on one or two, not tap, and then maybe you can Dark Lair um, and again, just hero power immediately for free and get that two mana back. Um, so that's a really cool synergy. Um, there's also like Flesh Giant in the list that gives it some mid-game punch. Oh, and lastly, we have Spirit Jailer. Spirit Jailer works super well on the list, I think. It gives some much needed healing. And it's also a demon that works well with Kanrathad, um, the Warlock Prime minion. So yeah, uh, a lot of really big upgrades, I think, for Dark Lair Warlock. It's a card that has had a ton of potential, and so really looking forward to see uh, how it goes with the expansion launch. All right, next up, let's talk about Odd Paladin. Odd Paladin is a deck that has been very strong for a long time, but hasn't really gotten a lot of attention, that hasn't seen a ton of play right now. But let's see if that changes with the next expansion, because Odd Paladin is going through a little bit of a makeover, I think. Um, well, you can't really start talking about Odd Paladin without addressing Tour Guide. Tour Guide is one of the most powerful cards that we got in the set, um, and it's particularly powerful in Odd Paladin. Uh, if you play this out on one, it's just better lost in the jungle. Um, <laughs> it, it's incredibly strong, it'll be incredibly high tempo, able to stack a ton of minions on board at once, but it also pushes Paladin in a little bit of a different direction. It really gives it the option to play Christology. Uh, Christology is another incredibly broken card, I think Odd Paladin has for a long time wanted an excuse to try Christology, and now Tour Guide really gives it some strong incentive to give that a shot. The list also plays Goody 2 shields. Um, this card just has like really excellent stats and uh, tempo for its cost, and there are a lot of one mana spells in the list, so it's not hard to see being able to play this guy on three, and then play another three drop or a pair of ones, uh, including a one cost spell on the following turn to get that shield back. Um, but yeah, this list looks really, really good, I think. Um, I think it'll be a very strong list to try with the expansion launch. So if anyone wants to give another look at the new new makeover, um, <laughs> the newly revamped Odd Paladin, I'd recommend that if you want to win on day one. Okay, next let's talk about another Warlock deck. Even Warlock. Even Warlock is a deck that I've seen a lot of hype for um, because it got some really great support with the expansion. Um, Firstly, Flesh Giant, right? Flesh Giant is the card that works so well with even Warlock because for the one mana, you get that one mana hero power and a one mana discount on the Flesh Giant itself. There are also a lot of uh, other like self damage and healing cards in the deck, including like Nether Breath, Spellstone, Volga Homunculus, um, just a whole bunch of stuff that you can do to get that Flesh Giant nice and cheap and give it another big threat in the mid game. Even Warlock also picked up Brittlebone Destroyer, a 4 mana 3-3, three, three, just tap and kill a minion. Um, <laughs> seems really efficient and gives even, Law even Warlock something that it hasn't really had previously, which is very strong, unconditional kind of hard removal. So yeah, Even Warlock got a ton of support this expansion, looking forward to giving that a shot. Okay, next up, let's talk about Spiteful Hunter. Now going to the Hunter set, I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do with the class, but once the wheels started turning on Spiteful Hunter, I became very happy uh, with the list that got put together here. 
Um, this deck uses a lot of the new synergistic uh, beast stuff, including Shando, a Kalaseth 2.0 <laughs> of sorts for the beast, and it also makes use of this little guy, uh, Alley Cat 2.0. Um, this really improves the early game and some of the snowball potential with Hyena. Um, and Shando itself obviously is a really big high roll if you can hit it um, early in the game. It also makes use of Teacher's Pet, which just seems like a good stats for cost <laughs> uh, beast in the mid game as well. But yeah, I really like the look of this list. Um, I think it has some potential to be pretty decent. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to actually giving this a shot. So hopefully any Hunter, Hunter players out there, um, Hunter hasn't always been the most played archetype in Wild. Uh, for a bit, but maybe this list inspires someone out there to give it a shot. Okay, so let's get a little crazy. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Kingsbane Rogue, but not just any Kingsbane Rogue. I'm talking about the most aggressive, low-curve nonsense that I think I've ever come across in Hearthstone. Um, this deck is insane. So I don't know if it's going to be good. I'm just excited to try it out. I have to. <laughs> this deck uses the new Reader as a two mana Jeeves, and also makes use of Secret Passage as a one mana draw five, um, dump your hand and then sort of lose those cards. Um, the curve is ridiculously low to be as efficient as possible in minimizing your hand size and also making the highest tempo plays possible when you play that secret passage. Um, the amount of draw that this list has is kind of insane. Um, and you can just dump things very freely. So yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to play this. It looks kind of gross. Um, I don't know if it's going to be good, but yeah, really hyped about it. Um, feels very unlike what we've seen in Hearthstone in terms of how ridiculously low and aggressive the curve is. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to this one and punching people in the head with a, whatever, eight attack King's Bane. <laughs> and lastly, let's talk about Miracle Druid. I'm sure some of you have seen the Reddit posts about the turn one OTK, and I don't know if turn one is possible, but we can definitely OTK early with this deck. Um, for the unaware, this deck functions, um, by just playing out Barnes or Kalaseth to get the Kalaseth. And then cycling through your entire deck and trying to kill the opponent in one turn. Um, <laughs> basically with overflow and UI, uh, you can just keep on drawing, keep on drawing and pointing things at the opponent's head with Starfire, Swipes, the UI itself. Um, and then a whole bunch of smaller damage from things like Pounce and Claw and all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, this deck has a ton of ability to like ramp. It gets a big upgrade with Lightning Bloom and the Studies, which are both very cheap spells that allow you to cheat more mana um, and work incredibly well with Kael'thas. And so yeah, this deck uh, saw a little bit of play back when Kael'sith was first released. Um, and it was <laughs> it was an experiment. It went okay, but not fantastic. But yeah, this deck got some major upgrades. I'm really looking forward to trying it, bringing it back. It looks disgusting, um, <laughs> but I'm going to have fun playing it uh, as soon as the expansion launches, I'm sure. So yeah, going for that OTK, going for that first turn kill. Uh, we'll see if we can pull it off. <laughs> um, but you guys, thank you very much for joining me today. Like I said at the top, if you want to find more deck lists, they're in my Discord server um, for uh, basically every archetype you could ask for. And I keep on adding stuff um, in the lead up to the expansion. If you guys want to catch me on Twitch, you can find me at Corbett Games and Twitter at the same handle, Corbett Games. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to be streaming a ton once the expansion launches. Real looking forward to it. Love expansion season. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoys as much as I do. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, catch you guys. Bye.